So now that we got the dump truck running, let's go ahead and fire it up, get it warmed up, pull it into the shop here and do some maintenance on it. Get our new filter pre-filled with some oil here. Try and do this carefully. Now I made sure to get the bottom of the oil pan cleaned up as best as I could. And then the oil filter housing, I also cleaned everything off of it as to make sure there was no contamination on there. So we'll go ahead and get this new oil filter installed. Okay. All right, so after pulling that drain plug out, I took a good look at it. And then if you could see those threads are really boogered up right here. So I just decided to run to town and I got a brand new drain plug, so we're gonna stick that baby in and then uh, get her top back off with oil. So this thing should take uh, somewhere between 10 and 11 quarts. Obviously we're gonna go based off of the dipstick. Now that we got all our engine oil added, we're going to go ahead and add seafoam motor treatment. And we're going to add this directly to our crankcase oil as described on the back here. So one ounce for each quart. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. And since we're doing the other filters, might as well place this air filter. As you saw in the last part, I got this thing all repainted. Came out pretty nice. Yeah, definitely time for this thing to go. Brand new Baldwin filter going in. Gotta get the sticker off so we can utilize all the power this thing's got. All 185 or whatever horsepower. 185 on a good day we'll take all we can get and if that means pulling the maiden mexico sticker off this thing so it takes to be a high performance dump truck okay that was easy time to do this fuel filter look at that nice and easy we like that try and do this without making a huge mess but we'll try it I make a little bit of a mess.
Me personally, I like to top these off with a little bit of additive. And a key thing to know with filters is, especially with fuel filters, a lot of the time people will just take diesel fuel and rub it around this O-ring. And that'll tend to make the filter want to stick when it comes time for replacement. So you always want to take this O-ring and put oil on it. And then my filter is mostly full. It's not all the way full because for me, I have a truck with an electric fuel pump. So I'm able to fill this the rest of the way with that, which is convenient. So I was able to get the dump bed up with a little bit of assistance from other equipment and I popped the cap off and as you can see here there is no fluid to be found. So I took a little universal fluid, I just topped it off. Now we're going to fire this thing up and uh, hopefully we can get this dump bed to go up and down on its own with no assistance. Get this PTO engaged. All right, how about it? Just needed a little bit of fluid. This thing's in the dumping position. Got to get some of these leaves out of here and clean it up, but it's a working dump truck now. To be completely honest with you guys, this truck really needs a cab. These cab corners have been welded back on and the cab mounts really aren't in very good shape. But a cab's not in the budget, so we're gonna fix it. And uh, by fix it, I mean cover it up. We're gonna fill this in, get it fixed up, make it look right. As far as underneath goes, we're gonna have to probably make some plates to fix the saggy cab. I do wanna make it a good working truck, so we're gonna do it the old farmer way and fix it. Well, if this cab was a virgin cab and it had never been modified or fixed up, I definitely wouldn't do this type of repair. But since this thing's already been all welded up before, whoever knows, who knows how many years ago, because this is already all rotted out again. So it's pretty safe to say this is probably at least 10 years old. But nonetheless, it's really not worth fixing the correct way, in my opinion. Well, I got this thing in the garage here and it's nice and warm. I might as well address this. I really hate this underbody box. It's all rusted out and uh, I don't like the look of it. It's way too close to the cab. I just think there's a, there's a better solution here. So time to get rid of this. All right, so all my expanding foam has now expanded and it's time to trim it all up and then get some Bondo on there. Um, I already know I'm gonna catch a lot of hate for this and uh, that's fine. I don't really care. This is gonna work 
and uh, it's really like i said it's not worth welding on this thing truck really needs a new cab so at this point we're just gonna make it good enough until we can get a new cab on it All the great stuff is smoothed out now and cut down. So I'm going to try something different here. We're going to take this Bondo glass, which is a fiberglass reinforced Bondo. We're going to mix this stuff up. I'm going to try and see if it'll fill that little hole there. If you guys can see that. And then uh, fill in the rest of this. I've never used this before, so we're just going to try our best here. And for anyone who just watched that and thought, I know nothing about bodywork, you're right. Now, I don't know anything about it. That's about as good as I am. So, due to that being a pretty big hole and a total failure with patching with the Bondo glass, I got this antique fiberglass kit that I found in the basement. And uh, I'm going to just try and put some fiberglass on that because you know what they say. If it's good enough for a Corvette body, it's good enough for a dump truck. All right, I got all the loose rust knocked down and I got the Bondo knocked down to the good enough level. Uh, I am gonna be bedlining this whole floor, but first I'm just gonna start with this low gloss oil-based paint. This stuff works pretty darn good just to, you know, give it a base coat. The oil-based works exceptionally well. It's the next day. We got the floor all painted and it's had time to dry overnight with that oil-based paint. So the next step, we're going to be using some of this truck bed liner and rolling it on. And that'll help to blend all the texture together. We have a lot of different surfaces here and then my awesome patchwork. So we're gonna get this rolled on and hopefully it'll make it look like one seamless floor with uh, a little less crappy body work. But time to get this thing rolled out. So I got the interior back put together on the dump truck, trims on, seats on, the seat belts are bolted down even. Uh, it came out looking a lot better than what we started with. I'm still going to get some floor mats just to help out a little bit. I have not gotten around to flushing the cooling system or changing the oil in the transmission. However, we're going to have to get to those before this thing hits the road. But for the time being, we'll get it pulled out of the shop. We've got to get it cleaned up in here and then uh, on to the next project. Well, the interior is looking a lot better than what we started with. Looks uh, quite a bit cleaner, but I don't think it'd be finished without one of these. There it is. Got the seat cover installed. This thing's looking better every day. So now we got the dump box working as it should. It's got a little bit of leak on that on the hydraulic unit of the, the PTO assembly, there's a little bit of a leak. So we're gonna have to track that down and see exactly where it's leaking and, and what seal we need to get replaced on there. But at least the dump box is working. We'll just keep it topped off with the fluid. Got the floor, uh, you know, redone. 
we got this thing serviced for the most part. We're still gonna do some more upgrades and I think I'm gonna do a fuel system overhaul coming up soon. But at least this thing is one step closer to being a, a daily driver here. Well, a daily dumper, I guess you would say. But so stick around.